there. My name is Dr. Michael Matthews. I am the pastor of Faith Missionary Baptist Church in Roebuck, which is in Birmingham, Alabama. And I want to welcome you to our enrichment studies. If you're watching this video, you're probably a member of Faith Missionary Baptist Church, or you're a prayer partner, or you financially support this ministry, or maybe someone just passed the link along to you and said, hey, uh, join us in our enrichment studies and however the Lord has brought you here we're just so happy to have you here today now our enrichment studies is just that it's designed for your growth and our mission here at Faith Missionary Baptist Church is to bridge the gap between Christ and our community by sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ well the only way you're going to be able to do that is if you're properly equipped to share God's Word and to grow as a Christian and become more Christ-like. That's what this enrichment studies uh, videos, that's what they're designed to do. So we'll be studying, of course, out of the Bible, which is our foundation. The Word of God is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. But we'll also be uh, studying out of some great theologians such as uh, J. Oswald Sanders and others. So thank you for taking this time out, whether it's in the morning, uh, during your lunch break or in the evening before you go to bed. We want to thank you for this time uh, that you've decided to join with us in this enrichment study. So come along with me for this segment's studies. May God bless you. May God keep you. May heaven ever smile upon you. This will be my prayer. Well, hello there. Uh, members of Faith Missionary Baptist Church in Roebuck and and anyone who uh, may have gotten a hold of the video link and may be looking at this video. Uh, this is a uh, video, it's an enrichment uh, training video and I pray that uh, you are uh, blessed as we begin a journey. Uh, these sessions they're going to be about 20 minutes long uh, I want to be uh, considerate of your time and I want to you know recognize that all of us are busy and we want to be able to continue to grow even as our lifestyles are very very fast paced so our series that we're going to embark on is leveraging the strengths of a small church and today's video is going to be in sort of an introduction to the subject of being a small church as you know we are a uh, small church and we'll get into that but I want us to understand that this is where God has placed us at this time and uh, we still have a lot of work to do but God has called us he has elected us to minister for such a time as this exactly as we are so let us begin with a moment of prayer uh, bow your heads in prayer with me if you will Lord we come to you at this time to pray for myself and those who hear the messages during these sessions we ask that those who have been brought to these sessions by your divine providence be blessed and receive what you have for them. Please let everything that is done or said be covered under the mighty name of Jesus so that it will be going forth and produce much fruit. As we go forward in these sessions we rely on you for wisdom as well as understanding. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. So today's session as I said is an introductory session to uh, strengths in small churches and I want to point out that a lot of times uh, when it comes to the size of a church or the size of anything size in is equated with strength and vice versa strength is sometimes uh, equated with size if you see something that is small or someone that is small you generally don't think them to be very strong but I want to let you know today that that is uh, a misnomer uh, so don't fool yourself because 
Uh, big things come in small packages. I'm sure you've heard that before. And God has uh, put in his word a passage of scripture that I want to share with you today to let us know just that, that God can do uh, great things uh, with small beginnings or with uh, situations that seem to be small. So let's look at our passage of scripture for this morning or for this afternoon or whenever you're watching this video um, is going to come out of the Gospel of St. Matthew. The Gospel of St. Matthew, the 13th chapter and the 31st through the 32nd verse. I'll be reading from the King James Version. It says, Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like to a grain of mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field, which indeed is the least of all seeds. But when it is grown, it is the greatest among the herbs, and becometh a tree, so that the birds of the air come and lodge in the branches thereof. That is a powerful, powerful scripture. When you talk about what can God do with something that in man's eyesight appears uh, to be small? If you look at the comparison between a mustard seed and what it be can become, that is something that we need to embrace and know that even though we may be small now by man's standards, God is still positioning us do great things. Uh, just like he talked about this mustard seed, you might look at this passage and say, well, that's not talking about the church, but it is talking about kingdom building, which is what we're supposed to be about. We're supposed to be about building um, a kingdom building as Jesus has charged us through the Great Commission. But we need to understand that it's okay uh, that we use what we have. Uh, I, I often think about uh, Abraham uh, Maslow's uh, his example of of having tools in your toolbox and if you if you only have a hammer uh, don't expect everything to be a nail because you'll go around and you'll try to hammer everything uh, like it's a nail and you don't want to ever come across a screw and take a hammer and nail that screw with a hammer because it, it makes more of a mess than uh, than it was intended so we have to understand the tools that are in our toolbox and if it's just a hammer that's okay we will await for God to give us a nail uh, to deal with that nail or because hammers can uh, press down or they can they can pull up so uh, some other part of other church might be the screwdriver so to speak and they handle the screws the, the thing about it is I want us to understand that all of us as churches we have roles to play so we don't want to compare uh, ourselves to the big church down the street or the mega church that you see on on TV and and think hey they got it going on uh, but we don't we are who we are in Christ as it relates to the job that he has called for us to do uh, in the Roebuck community so when you talk about leveraging the strengths of small churches we are um, in the industry standard if you will we're considered a small church because we are uh, a congregation of less than 250 folks that's what we're going to use as the standard for our uh, sessions as we go forward today but when you talk about leveraging something uh, leveraging is to use something to the maximum advantage and we as African American people, we, uh, down through the years, we have been uh, accustomed and I believe gifted at doing a lot with just a little bit. Uh, don't you remember when mama and, and grandmama used to look around into the kitchen and then in the pantry and didn't see much there? And, but they took a little bit of this and a little bit of that and they put it all together and next thing you know you got a whole meal uh, when I was growing up 
I didn't have too many days uh, where I had to go hungry because there was always food there. I don't know uh, how my parents struggled and got what they got, but uh, they knew, but I didn't know because I always went to uh, bed with a uh, full belly uh, unless I chose not to eat what they put in front of me. And that sometimes happened with children too, especially these days. But when you talk about leveraging, leveraging is something that is done to use something to the maximum advantage using something to the maximum advantage and Jesus understood that when you had the grain of a mustard seed when you had the grain of a mustard seed he, he saw that that was something that was done uh, it was planted it was a common crop and they saw it as small and I believe that I've already shared the uh, I hope I've shared the 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 depiction the picture so you can see the difference between the size but it's okay it's okay to be a mustard seed uh, because as time goes on God you see where God uses that mustard seed to do a, a great kingdom building work it serves a greater purpose but that seed has to plant it has to germinate it has to grow and that in itself is a a process and this is part of the process uh, for me is to uh, work with you to create a better awareness of who we are in Christ so it's okay for us to be a small church because whatever tools God gave us we just need to use that to the best of our ability so when you talk about leverage it's to use something to the maximum advantage but what about strength what about strength what does that mean and strength for our purposes today is the potency, intensity, or speed of force or natural agency. And I want, I want to work with that in just a minute. But it's also a good or beneficial quality or attribute of a person or a thing. That's their strength. In other words, that's what you're good at. Uh, many times we compare our strengths and our weaknesses and, and sometimes we are asked uh, what are our strengths and weaknesses on an interview or something like that and then we have to kind of search the recesses of our mind to figure out what those are because sometimes we think about them sometimes we don't but I want us to take these sessions and and ponder what are the strengths of Faith Missionary Baptist Church Roebuck uh, for those of you uh, who are just watching this video what are, what are your strengths uh, at your church uh, and once you identify those str strengths God can use you to do a mighty work for kingdom building. But when it talks about strength being the potency or intensity or speed of a force or natural agency, in, in other words, even though you might be small, there are certain strengths that you have that you can bring to the table that no one else can. Uh, some of you already know, but I'll share this with you. I served in the military and uh, I served in the United States Navy. And if you look at the fleet of ships that the Navy has, the Navy has big aircraft carriers, uh, they have battleships, which are even smaller than the carriers, and then they have destroyers, and then they even have uh, what is referred to as small PT boats. But each one of those different types of ships are designed to do something different. Uh, but they're all on the same team, and they're all designed for battle. So as a small church, it's important that members of small churches and pastors of small churches that we embrace who we are and what role we have to play. Uh, a lot of times what tends to happen is we get into the game of comparing our church To the larger churches and just because we are small we don't want that to to mean that we are not equal to the big church we're equal to the big churches in mission because our mission is the same we still have to hold up the bloodstained banner which is Christ Jesus so our mission 
is the same and that's what makes us equal because we're equal in the eyesight of God we just have a different purpose in mind so when we talk about that small church we said that is um, it's less than uh, 250 folks or 250 folks or less and then when you look at the larger churches the larger churches will say that that's greater than 250 people and that's on an average attendance on a Sunday you know you can look out into your crowd and see what you have but I want you to know today that I'm excited about this particular uh, study I want us to know that this is a study that is going to uh, enrich us because when you look at what has been happening uh, over the past you know 25 to 30 years most of the focus of literature has been on uh, church ministry and church growth and uh, how to, to design a better mission statement how to attract visitors and uh, how to develop small groups and uh, how to increase membership in other words how do we we pack them in how do we get the people to come in but now we have to look at the fact that our society has changed because of the pandemic uh, we have uh, two things going on one the culture has changed to the point where the people are not always in the church like we would like to to believe them to be they're not in the church but what they are they are outside of the church they're not in the church they're outside of the church so our culture is such where uh, people are becoming less likely to actually attend the church building and uh, some people are actually uh, more comfortable with, with staying at home and watching services on the internet and things like that and we still have an obligation uh, to minister to them but we still have to ask ourselves in our minds is, is bigger always better and the answer is no bigger is not always better because there are certain churches that are are large in size and they may appear on the outside to have more resources and be uh, uh, able to do more things however they have more bills to pay they have more assets they have more vehicles they have more uh, uh, cost uh, to deal with whereas we don't have those burdens if you are in a small church so bigger is not always better but bigger does serve a purpose but small serves a purpose also so uh, also we need to embrace uh, the identity of being a small church and look at some of the advantages uh, that comes with being a smaller size church and that's what we're going to do uh, as we move forward in the future sessions and I hope you stay with me uh, on this journey uh, in some cases we you know we may need to challenge ourselves to get past the uh, mindset that we're not uh, as able as the larger churches but we need to make sure that we we stay in our lane and we do what God has uh, called us to do you're going to find out that in this session and in these uh, sessions going forward that there are some things that we can do that a larger church can't do and people always sometimes may believe not always but sometimes they may believe that they need the bigger church but that's not really what they need they really need the smaller church but they go to the bigger church because it's bigger it's more attractive in some cases and sometimes that's just the faddish thing to do that's the thing everybody's doing everybody's going to the big church so let's all go to the big church but really their needs are not being filled at the big church and sometimes we have to catch ourselves because sometimes we're looking over here at what's going on at the big church when we need to be preparing for these people here who are at the big church that really don't belong at the big church they really need to be at the smaller church so we need to be preparing ourselves to minister uh, at the small church level for folks who have those type of needs that match up better with us and I want you to understand today also that these people don't always know 
uh, what they desire in the church. They may think they want a larger size church, but they don't really realize that until they get there and realize after a while that they've been there uh, a while and they're really not being fulfilled, but they get used to it. And they've been going there for years and years and years and their family's been going there and it's very difficult to change churches. That's one of the things that's hard is changing churches. And that's one of those personal issues that we need to leave with folks. We don't need to pull folks from other churches. That's not what we're doing because God is in charge of all of the, all of the kingdom building and he adds to the church. We need to let the Holy Spirit lead and guide people uh, to the various churches that they have. Now, do we need to witness? Yes, we do. Do we need to um, share about our church? Of course we do. But we want to do that as the Spirit allows us to do it. Uh, because I guarantee you that if the Spirit draws the people, whether they're from the outside or whether they're from another church, if they draw, uh, if the Spirit draws them to a smaller church, whether it's ours or another smaller church, then they're going to be properly placed. Okay? So, it's been my experience as I closed out this session uh, that if we are faithful over a few things, God will make us ruler over many things. We have a season right now where we are actually a small church. We can't worry about what we used to be, but we have to uh, embrace who we are now. And that's what I'm asking all of us to do and all of us to pray that God brings us together and recognize that we still, as a small church, we still have to roll up our sleeves and we still have a, a lot of work to do. And need, we need to pray and then sow some seeds uh, so that God will give the increase. This is the end of our session today. I hope that you have been blessed and I hope that you have uh, been introduced to this subject and I pray that you will uh, stay tuned for the, the following sessions where we are going to talk about the uh, authenticity of the small church. May God bless you. May God keep you. This will be my prayer. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for being with us for this uh, period of learning. Uh, Lord, we ask that you continue to walk with us and guide us. And Lord, continue to touch these studies. And, and Lord, I pray that these studies find themselves into the hands uh, where they will be most fruitful. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Bye-bye. God bless you. Well, it looks like we made it through our subject for today. I pray that something has been said or done or illustrated in such a way that has allowed you to become uh, more equipped uh, to share the gospel, uh, more equipped to live a more Christ-like life. I want to thank you again, uh, and I look forward to seeing you soon uh, in another one of our Enrichment Study segments. Now, if you're not a member of Faith, I would like to take this opportunity to invite you to join us. Uh, please call us at 205-730-1733 or you can email us if you're interested in more information about the church at faithmbc9841 at gmail.com and you can just uh, drop us an email and if you're not interested in joining the church that's fine we still want you to uh, join along with us in our enrichment studies uh, journeys but we would love to at some point hear from you or when the time allows for you to visit us we'd love for you to visit us so I look forward to seeing you again really really soon God bless you and God keep you